and welcome to this information session. I wanted to begin by thanking you for being here today. I know principals have very busy schedules, but I believe what I am promoting will transform your thinking about the place of imagination and creativity in schools. So, what exactly is imagination and creativity? Imagination and creativity is probably more complex than you think. Imagination and creativity is the ability to envision what is not yet possible and results in products that are original, novel and useful within a social context. Thinking imaginatively and creatively is the first step towards innovation. Now, you might be wondering why imagination and creativity is important for schools. As you know, the Australian curriculum includes critical and creative thinking as one of the general capabilities that need to be taught. ACARA outlines critical and creative thinking as a necessary skill for responding to the challenges of the 21st century. Our jobs as educators is to ensure that we are preparing students for a rapidly changing global society. It is through encouragement of imagination and creative practices that we can achieve this. So, we know that imagination and creativity is integral for producing citizens of the 21st century, but how can we encourage students in our schools to be imagina imaginative and creative thinkers? What I am promoting is a way to transform our thinking towards imagination and creativity in the physical school setting. We need to design spaces within schools that allow for natural tendencies to be imaginative and creative and that facilitate discourse and constructive sharing of ideas between peers. It is highly important that when we are reconsidering the design spaces for learning in our schools, we ensure that these spaces are centred around student interaction. Why? What does interaction have to do with supporting student imagination, creativity and innovation? Well, let me explain. Innovation does not just occur spontaneously. Imagination and creativity develop over a period of time, incubating before flourishing into fruition. During this incubation period, imagine, imagination and creativity undergo a process of transformations that are influenced by direct engagement with the world around us. When students are immersed in a collaborative environment that encourages sharing and swapping of information and ideas between them, innovation is more likely to strike. No good idea ever came to fruition by itself. It came together with the help of a group of people. Steve Johnson called this type of environment a liquid network, where ideas from individuals who have different backgrounds, interests and experiences are brought together into a space that is specifically set up for these ideas to come together and bounce off of each other. Now, to get into the theory that emphasises what I'm talking about. To best support student innovation, there needs to be a shift in the design of our learning spaces, with a particular focus on the constructivist approach, which involves interaction and collaboration for cognitive development. Vygotsky's social constructivist theory views learning as a co-constructed process in which people interact and negotiate with each other to create an understanding or solve a problem with the final product being shaped by all involved. Collaboration and communication uh, of imaginative and creative ideas is centred in peer-orientated teaching and learning where students help each other build knowledge and develop innovative ideas and products. You're probably familiar with Vygotsky's zone of proximal development, in which students are able to construct knowledge that is outside their current independent functioning with the assistance of a more advanced peer. Piaget believed that interactions between peers challenges each other's thinking, creating a disequilibrium or cognitive conflict that results in the transformation of understanding. This stage between the known and the unknown knowledge is referred to as the liminal space, where conceptual boundaries of knowledge are crossed. An environment that supports liminal learning through student interaction is central to promoting imaginative and creative thinking and behaviour in our schools. So, we've heard the theory that supports a constructivist learning environment to foster imagination and creativity in schools. 
you're probably wondering what I'm actually proposing in regard to redesigning our schools to become a more interactive space for creativity and imagination to flourish. I think it would be fair for me to say that almost every school in Australia has a library space. For decades, there have been conversations about how to create libraries for schools that accommodate learners for the 21st century. Most of these discussions have been about the incorporation of technology into library spaces to facilitate modern demand for ICT in learning. But what I'm proposing is the idea that school libraries should be transformed into spaces where students are able to actively engage with each other for imaginative and creative thinking. This isn't to say that integrating technology into school libraries shouldn't be a priority. Instead, I'm here to promote a vision for the future of libraries, one that includes a variety of methods and resources to serve our modern educational priorities. What I'm presenting isn't about denouncing libraries and their traditional roles, but instead reinventing them into environments that enhance a sense of innovation, play, investigation of ideas, and above all, a space for interaction and connection with people. I like to refer to these potential spaces as hubs where people are able to come together where imagination and creativity is actively explored. Approaching libraries as new redesigned spaces that encourage interaction is student-centred and intended to develop students' own cre creative thinking, which is based on a teaching for creativity pedagogical approach. So, there are some real-life examples of environments that are set up to promote imagination and creativity through interactive design. The first one that comes to mind for me is the way Google has created workspaces for their employees. Google adopted the theory that open spaces constructed to facilitate cross-fertilization of ideas are great because they are set up to link people together, prioritizing open discourse and sharing as a means to facilitate imagination and creativity. Every encounter between individuals has the potential to forge new concepts, construct ideas, or expand knowledge. A great example of a reimagined library environment is the UMedia Learning Lab Network programs that began in the Chicago Public Library system. These library spaces give students the opportunity to come into the library space and use it as an outlet for imaginative and creative thinking and behaviour. What happens in here is creativity. It really allows the library to be seen by teens as a place where they can give a full license to their creativity, whether it's in uh, their love of literature, poetry, music, um, or their desire or interest in using technology and digital media to express themselves creatively. As you can see, this is a place that acts as a network for learning. Constant and encouraged interaction between students is at the core of how this environment runs, with the space specifically designed for collaboration. While these are both excellent examples of transforming spaces in schools to support student interaction to benefit their imaginative, creative and innovative thinking and behaviour, they cannot be directly in implemented into our own schools. It is necessary to recognise that each school will have their own approach to designing a collaborative, innovative space. This is important to acknowledge because you cannot follow a recipe for developing creativity. Your role as, a as the principal is vital because you are the ones who can go back into your school to inform your colleagues about what you have heard here today and then consider how you and your school can approach library spaces with a new outlook for imagination and creativity. Thank you for your attention throughout this session. I hope you have learnt something new here. A recording of this session will be available to access on YouTube with a transcript included in the comments. Goodbye.